The following podcast is a Dear Media production. Welcome back to Probably a Podcast. Um, we were just here. Literally, we just walked upstairs. I put this dress on. How do I look? New day. New I, day. I like that dress, actually. I wore it in London. Makes your boobs look nice. Yeah, it does. I agree. Mm. Okay, so we're back. Part two, baby. Um, we're going to cover some ground. We are going to dive right in. Well, okay, I wanted to ask you. Uh, you look nice, too, by the way. Thank you. You're welcome. I, do you know what? I think <laughs> I'm scared. I think women women get complimented a lot, which is the way it should be, particularly in relationships, right? But you know, it's like sometimes us men we want to compliment too. I'm, I, not, I'm not saying you don't. I'm just saying I look at you. You can never compliment enough. You can because if you compliment too much, it becomes mundane and ineffective. But every now and again, baby, I love that t-shirt on you. When I tell you. You just close your eyes for a second and think that I, all day, I look at you and go, you're so fucking hot. I'm closing my eyes. You don't, you don't really have to close your eyes. It was just for the effect. But like, do I not look at you all day randomly and go, you're so fucking hot? Yes. Sometimes, yeah. A lot. No, you're good. You're great. I'm not saying you. I'm just saying in general. Men like compliments. You Men like good. compliments. You look good, babe. Yeah. You look good. Um, okay, so I lost my train of thought. Oh, I'm sorry. That's Okay can't help you there i don't know what's in that do, head of yours do, i'd be in there do. for hours if i was trying to find your train of thought <laughs> <laughs> you really would be um okay well first of all i do think we had ended with like our first impression of each other etc but um and you had said earlier on in the conversation one of the questions that people had asked us was like did you ever think you dated an american and you had said like you kind of like weirdly wanted to check it off on your bingo card or you just thought it'd be fun i added the bingo card part yeah yeah i did think it'd be fun it is fun so far it's living up to the hype okay but historically i have been with mainly blonde girls oh you never knew you'd date a red that was another question that, yeah so like your I, first redhead. yeah you're my first redhead i ask every guy that i've like i'm ever into i'm always like i casually will be like some people have a thing for redheads and like some people have a weird, weird thing yeah that's weird i know someone and you know him as well back in the uk who has a girlfriend who's, who's who has a thing for redheads <laughs> what <laughs> yeah 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 that's Is what i mean like, a redhead? like 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 what would you do if i was like Is his girlfriend a redhead? As, i don't know if I was a serial redhead, I wouldn't like it. Lover. My mom, Sharon K. Ford, told me I was way too young to like hear the word fetish, especially coming out of your mother's mouth. It was weird, <laughs> mom. That was weird. But she like told me she's like never ever date a man that has a fetish, and I was like, for what? I think I had to ask her what fetish meant first, and she was like, she was basically saying like if a man has a fetish for redheads, like don't date him. Is it? Can can you? Is there such thing as a fetish for redheads? Hell yeah, bro. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, you, oh, you, you be dating there's them? Kind of, there's, no. <laughs> you be dating them? But like, yeah, there's there's fetishes for everything. Redheads are for sure up there. And every and it is so off-putting to me. I've definitely met men before that are like, like complimentary, will say something nice, inflate my ego, and then they'll say like, I have a thing for redheads. And then I'm like, I don't want to be with you. Yeah, but that's not a fetish. Like, you can have like foot okay, fetish. Well, like, you know what like I mean. foot fetishes. I understand that. It's like slight, something slightly wrong in your head. <laughs> no, I just mean people that say they have a thing for redheads. Right. I don't know why, but I don't want you to like me because I have red hair. Well, I do like you because you have red hair. Not the only thing. It's part of it. Would you, you, really? would you, would you, if, okay, if, if we met in Barcelona and I said, and we were just talking about our history of, of relationships and I said, oh, um, four of my exes have been redheads too. Red flag. No pun intended. Really? And yes, I would literally be like, ew, I well, would not like that. My ex lost his virginity to a redhead, never dated another redhead before me. It always bothered me. <laughs> <laughs> it really bugged me. I remember I went to his parents' house one time, like forever and ever ago, and I found these like, oh, we like looking through old photos as you do whatever. And there was a prom picture of him and a redhead. And I was like, and she was pretty. And I was like, dang it. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> you like, you like being me. the only redhead. Is that what it is? Yeah. It's just, it's just, it's a selfish thing. It's a selfish thing. And also I do think it's just like, I, it is, it is off putting to me. If when a guy says, cause I've had men say it to me before, like I've got a thing for redheads. I'm like, ew. To be honest, I was just thinking if you had, if you had said to me, oh, I've only dated fitness guys. rugby fitness guys, I'd be like, that's weird. Yeah. Wouldn't you be like, that's I don't, weird. I don't, I don't, yeah. I don't Why, feel, dissect so. it. Why do you think you would think it's weird? Cause I don't, I don't really have real answers other than like, I guess I, I think probably selfish. because I think probably because I'm like, we want to feel different. Maybe we want to feel like the first maybe. ones that like, you maybe, but no, but like if, if you had dated a fitness guy before me, I, that wouldn't have bothered me. If every single one of them had been like, looked like me, you know? Yeah. A type, like, like a serious a type, type. Then, then, then I'd be like, it, you know, what's stopping her from just going on to the next, like 
Yeah, it makes you. It doesn't make you feel special. That's what it is. Because I'm like, so. I'm just like a. I'm on your Rolodex of redheads. Like I don't want to be that. Yeah. Like and also I don't want to be at the butt of a but joke. You, yeah, but like, you, you can't meet... help that if you meet someone and you and your past. Like if if my past was Babe. was full of redheads and I met you and you were like. Sorry, James. Babe, <laughs> you date a load of redheads. It's not happening. I'd be like, wow, you're shallow. No, babe. My <laughs> ex could not help that his first girlfriend was a redhead. That I could never hold against him. If your past four girlfriends are redheads, you are doing that. <laughs> that is you. <laughs> okay, no, fine, that's you weird. <laughs> like, I, I think it's because I want to feel special. That must be what it is. A yeah. slight bit of narcissism. And then also, like, I want to feel special. I'm like, I don't want. I also, this is what I was going to say. I don't want to be the butt of a joke. Like, I don't want to see all your friends and them go, oh, oh another redhead. Another. You know what I mean? I'd be like. To be fair, that's what they used to say about my exes. Oh, another blonde girl. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Here I am. <laughs> Not going blonde, ever. Um, yeah, okay. Well, that's good to know. And really, we really unpacked that one. Um, I also wanted to know, well, okay, this was another one. It falls under the category of people that asked a question. And then I'm also like, yeah, will you tell me? Tell me. <laughs> oh, here we go. Okay, so... And then we're going to get into some mean stuff after this. So yeah. just really hype yeah, me let's, up. Let's, so you let's can lay into each other a little bit. Hype me up so you can push me down in a second. Okay. So when was, so in Barcelona, I think I did. I know I did. I said this on the podcast. I, I referenced the moment where you said to me, like, like I remember thinking I was like, and that's like a fairy tale because it did feel like a fairy tale. We both said this. We still can't believe. Sometimes it's cute. Sometimes he, he'll just text me and I'll do the same to him. And he'll be like, babe. I can't believe the way we met. And I'm like, I know. And he's like, I can't believe I'm traveling to America. Sometimes I wake up in the morning. I'm like, I'm lying in a bed in Nashville next to a guy I met in Barcelona. That's weird. You sound like you said guy. Come here and give me a kiss. (laughs) Come here and give me a kiss. Wait, did I say guy? No, I didn't. Who could be too sure? Um, (laughs) I can. can. I'm so sure. It's it's not an innuendo for anything. I I just want to set set that straight. Because I've got a lot of people, a lot of followers who think I do swing both ways with my best mate. So I can see see why. Because I think sometimes... You're just very comfortable in your sexuality. Yeah, that's true. And, And also... Like, no toxic masculinity here, folks. I think it's just the way I move. I think my hips. <laughs> uh, um, someone asked how, how you became such a good dancer. I think it's probably uh, from my dad. My dad is a good little dancer. Mark, I've never yeah. seen him dance. I remember when I was sidetracking here, make it quick. I was like 10 years old and he would have these, my parents would have these like big dinner parties and it would be late and I'd come creeping down the stairs because obviously as a kid, you're like, oh, loud music. I want to see what they're up to. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And they were like drunk and dancing. My dad's just like flinging women around the dance floor, like doing all this Cute. salsa stuff. And, oh my God. That's... And I used to just watch him and I think that, and then I just was always really like into dancing from that point. What a core memory. That's so pure. You're like hiding on the stairs watching your dad yeah. just like dance and yeah, have so yeah. much fun. I, I, I could still, you know, we like the old school music. Yeah, 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 yeah. cute. That, that's why. Um, but, um, I, when I posted on my close friends, obviously in Barcelona and I was like, whatever. He was like, is that James Middleton? And I remember going, how could he know that? I don't have his name on here. And I, and I go, yes. And all he wrote back was, damn it. I thought he was gay. Yeah, <laughs> and I, was I, like, oh. I do. I, I do have that. Uh, I do have that. But that's a stereotype, lot. I think, with like fitness and you're always working out with other guys. And I mean, like, yeah, that might just be like but a again, I'm just like, it's just very, I'm just very comfortable with my sexuality. I love it. I think it's so hot. So we also had someone on the uh, podcast in the past, Jalen, who he, just long discussion about toxic masculinity and like, just like the different things that people like associate with like, oh, you can't do that because you're a guy or if you do this, you must like, it was just like crazy. The, and, and a lot more in America than in Europe. In Europe, like if you salsa dance in Europe, people are like, hell yeah. You're like watching your dad who is a, like very masculine man, like salsa dance. And you're like, cool. You're not like, why is my dad doing that in America? It's like, it's yeah. just different. There's definitely a lot more yeah. toxic masculinity I mean, we won't, we won't, in America. We won't go into it because I could talk about that all day, but you can very much be a man, you know, man of the house, building stuff and, and traditional alpha male and still, you know, have a little salsa dance with a lady. <laughs> have a little salsa dance with a lady. We need to get you, I agree. Uh, we need to get you salsa ring. Maybe that's what we'll do when we go back the to Europe. The way he Europe. says salsa, isn't it so funny? Salsa ring. <laughs> Why do you add the R? Salsa ring. What? No, you're still adding salsa the R. You're still- salsa ring. Salsa. I like the salsa. No, you're still adding the R. Salsa ring. <laughs> well, you say, wait, how do you say sal- salsa ring? <laughs> salsa but say ing if you were going salsing <laughs> that's a different word salsing you like, what the hell is salsing okay we could do this for hours salsa. as well anyway, okay okay we're missing the main point we need point. to go yeah but we main need to go point salsa was when we were in barcelona we will go salsa dancing salsa ring um um <laughs> when we were in barcelona and i've talked about this on the podcast how you looked at me and we we're like it was like, I don't know, maybe like after we'd gone to Ibiza, had the worst trip of my life and then come back to Barcelona. 
yeah had the best trip of my life and we were only together for probably what two more days three more days yeah three more days three more days and i remember before you left it was like the last night and you said i just like don't want this to be a vacation well holiday not vacation i don't want this to be a holiday fling and i remember literally being like this is not real life this gorgeous man who i'm obsessed with already did not just say this to me that he wants to see me past just a fling in barcelona but i was like yeah, uh, you, you yeah knew, we don't you have to knew, do you no i didn't yeah, like yeah. no no okay, but if i if i didn't say anything would you have said i want to keep seeing you or would you have just i would have just like, no. i would have just kept i would have hoped that we would keep texting i don't think i would have said like i want i don't know i don't think i would have had the courage or the balls to be like i want this to be more than just a fling because it, it, it you did live in you do live in london so like i didn't assume it was really like on either one of our radars even after you said it i was like i don't know how the fuck we're gonna make this work but i hope we do like mm. i didn't know that was yeah. even in my like mind cute because you're normally you're 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 miss ballsy woman but you're a little a little shy, shy i was a little shy um i hear my i hear miss anna grace coming downstairs come on no you can come in i've already said you're here oh, okay. oh my God, you guys are doing do you want to pop in and say hi on the mic oh my God, please yeah. <laughs> an anna a young anna grace in the wild i would just like to say that james has passed the vibe check in like a hundred thousand areas i put him on tiktok i made him Aww. perform on the spot we just talked about dancing oh okay <laughs> so funny yeah well we love him and i love you guys i'm so sorry i just interrupted i love you, love you oh, Grace. Mama, to kiss. Mm. Ooh, yum. i love you we're love you starving like we're gonna eat food after this if you want to eat after this okay yeah, i would love that okay bye. bye okay anyways <laughs> <laughs> sorry um all that being said in that moment because i was not ballsy at the time and you said that what made you someone was wondering this is the part where i was like oh i'm curious too what made you want to how did they word it they said in what moment did you know you wanted it to be more than a holiday fling what yeah do you remember that moment or can you not really place it as a moment it's more of a feeling yeah it's more of it's, it's not one specific moment it was yeah. just a feeling and it was i think it was just the whole thing of how we met and like i'm not massively into the kind of you know universe doing stuff for you i think it's you better be glad anna grace just walked out the well, door no 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 I'm like I, i'm not i'm not not, not i'm kidding you're allowed to say whatever you want slagging it off i'm saying i'm saying you very much get out what you put in right for most of the time but in that instance i just couldn't i just like it's just and i was speaking to angus about it when i wasn't with you i was just like it's just nuts that that i've met this girl and like she's and and I'd basically given up with girlfriends at the time. I was like, "There's no one out there. I'm going to die single and old, and <laughs> and hopefully quite rich." But that that's that, I could deal with that. But anyway, I met you, and and I just I just said to him, I was like, "This it just it, there's just something so different that was with you that I've had I had with you that I haven't had with with basically all of my previous relationships." And that's when I was like, "I don't care that you live." you know six hour fly away in a different country in a different time zone i was like like the last five days four days from everything from just like our conversations to you know our sex and like everything was just like fire and i was like this has got to this has got to continue okay i really cannot express how much i like that answer yeah that makes me really happy yeah was that the same with you I had never felt anything like this before, but I really was like, this isn't real life. Like, there's no way. Like, I couldn't even, I just thought, I thought I'd be married with kids one day, still reminiscing about this time, this crazy time in Barcelona. I remember, I you, I remember you saying that to me, actually, when we were together. And I was just like, figured I was I'd like, always oh, look yeah. back and, and, I, and, and like, I was like, this doesn't have to be a, this doesn't have to be a, but I think you were saying that to kind of get me to be like, I want to see you again. I was baiting you. It was all tactical. I'm a tactical bitch. <laughs> um i have to go back. i'm flustered i have to go back to my notes um, <laughs> oh how could i forget now let's see um what is i already know the answer to this what is your biggest pet peeve for go. me oh all right <laughs> he's in tennessee now yeah <laughs> he's gogging his, gogging his firearms y'all when he got to my house in tennessee he goes he walks in so obviously we've been a week in new york and then he came he came here and he walks in and he goes oh my gosh it's a proper home and i was like yeah honestly i'm not gonna lie i, I was like really excited like that i do not I do sound like oh that my God, a proper home. you were really nice you're like wow it's so nice and i was like yeah i don't because you know of course in new york i have like a one-bedroom apartment it's nice but it's, it's an apartment and so it was like really nice and giddy because i was like oh yeah this is my house like you love when someone feels happy in your home it was maybe the third thing he said. He goes, I thought he was going to ask, like, where's the bathroom or something? He goes, Yeah, you give me a tour of the house. I was like, listen, I just, in my head, I was like, I just, just get me to your bedroom because that's where the guns are. He goes, babe, 
can you show me your guns? And I was like, sure, <laughs> you fucking weirdo. I'm like, yeah. That's not weird. We don't have that in England. Yeah, yeah. I have we ne- should, I have, we I've, should I've have less of real, them. I've never seen a real gun in, in my life, really. Apart really? from when you go to like, a, a, you go play paintball or you go to a shooting. I think I went to a shooting range once, but you know. Yeah. It's yeah, not I a mean, thing. I think America should have less of them. Like real but... bullets as well in that gun. Hectic. <laughs> Imagine. Um, yeah, a crazy concept for him, but he was in Nashville, Tennessee. So, mm. um, yeah, anyway, so I want to know what your pet peeve is. Yeah. I know what it is. Do you want me to say what I think it is? No, I, I want you to listen. I'll tell you how what it is. That might be his pet okay. peeve. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty much it. <laughs> so, <laughs> that is it. You literally just did it. No, <laughs> no. It's, <laughs> look how eager you are to freaking say what it is. Um, it, yeah, it's. I think it's being in, <laughs> wanting to be involved in like everything, which to some degree is endearing, and and I love like some parts of it. But as, as an example, yeah. So as an example, when we're putting up that rail rack in New York, and all the instructions are out, and you know, there, there's labels of the, the things and it's a very simple thing to put together. And I'm like... I'm a real like, rack is a clothing rack, by Clothing the way. rack, sorry. And I'm like starting to put things together and you're like, wait, 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 is that Jay? And I'm like, yeah, because I read the instructions and I picked up Jay. Wait, 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 where's the screw? No, the screw. Have you got the right screw? And like every single thing I was doing, you're like... And I was like, babe, just let was me I do... Was I micromanaging you? Let me do this. <laughs> like, let me do this by myself. Oh, okay. Yeah? That's fair. Except a little sidebar... You put one piece on backwards. We did have to go Shut back a couple steps Shut and had maybe you listened. It's, it's another thing as well. Like if I'm doing something like on my phone or I've like, I'm trying to like fix something and you're just like over my shoulder. Thank God you don't breathe loud. Otherwise be like. Mm. <laughs> you're s- and, and, and I'm like, I'm like trying to do it quickly. I can just tell you're going to be like, let me do well, it. Well, in America, you don't have a really good cell service and he'll be like trying to search something for me. And I'm like, here, I'll do it. It's like, a, but it's, it's, it, I think it's linked to your lack of patience. Probably. I think everything in life is linked to my lack of patience. But like, it's don't get me wrong. Like the positives of it are that you do get stuff done and you are quite like, when you have stuff to do, you're like, boom, boom, bish, bash, bosh. There we go. Um, bish, bash, bosh. Yeah. But even like, even like last night, babe, at the dinner table, <laughs> And it's really sweet, but like I just every, oh, anytime, is it really sweet? Is it really I was sweet? just going up. I was like, even when like people are ordering, you're like, oh no, but you should get this. Or, or you, what about this? And then you, and then you like, did I do little, that? A little bit, a little bit. I think we were trying to decide which starters to get, and so we were all having a conversation. Yeah, but who put the starters in for everyone? I think yeah, everyone wanted me to. You did. You did no. No one had a choice. You just went in. <laughs> I knew half the Baby, starters just were... be like yeah just, just be like yeah that, that sounds like me just say yeah okay I do be doing that oh, yeah, okay I'd be doing that okay what's my pet peeve but like but, but as, as a pet peeve I think that's I mean it's not it so bad could be a lot worse it's not so bad my pet peeve for you you could snore at night I don't want to be a snorer no in little moments you think I you've snore? been you've been good the past two nights I don't snore no once or twice what does it sound like just like mouth a little bit you see with your mouth open i think that's the thing but it's mainly when you're in the back and it's like oh my god <laughs> that's but not good but it's but it's weird because you only do it for like you only do it for like not that i'm awake that long like listen like, you, you only watching do it for a couple sleep? of minutes and then you stop and then i'm like oh it was, maybe she's just having a weird dream and she's running away from someone <laughs> like, <sighs> that's not i would rather like I'd rather no, do that. I wouldn't know if you did that. I'd be like, <laughs> down. I need to sleep in a different room. It's cute that it's like not even like a proper snore. It's like a, it's like an attempted snore. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. I'm trying to think of my pet peeve of you. Um, I mean, it's like hard because it's like one of my favorite things about you is that you're so busy and you work so hard and you put your work first. But sometimes your time management's not ideal because you really are like, I will finish this regardless if it like bleeds into the time we have to leave. And sometimes I'm like, I remember I told you we have to leave in an hour and it's been yeah. an hour and 20, but that's like you're working. So Yeah, I think, and I agree with that because uh, my time management sometimes is poor. And I think it's because it's this thing of like when you run your own business, there is always something that you can be doing. And I think sometimes I just need to be like, this can wait and I can do it later. Whereas I'm in my part of me is like, oh, we're leaving at three. It's five, two. Let me just try and do this now. My pet peeve is also that you like cold oh, okay, stuff. Okay, another one. Huh? I don't like that you like stuff that's so cold cold 
showers, water. I don't like I don't like your water preference. But you're not in there with me. You're gonna make me go in the water. You did make me go in the water with you when we're on vacation. It's freezing. Oh, like twice a year, you gotta do that. We're only gonna go on vacation twice a year. No, but I'm saying it's not like it's not like I'm making you like dip in the cold sea every day. Yeah, that's true. Okay, fair. Do you shower with me? Yeah, you do. But I don't. I wait for it for you to get out before it's cold. That's true. You do. Also, you like sleeping in a freezing cold air conditioned room. So you like the cold as well. I like the cold when you have something to only when it suits you, right? Cozy up with. Ooh, nice. <laughs> We've had the air conditioning off a lot during this trip. Mm. Although the mosquitoes flew in, uh, this guy left my uh, door this open. This guy, me, I didn't realize they'd all come barraging in. Well, only it only takes two to destroy my life. The mosquitoes, you've seen it. I, figured, I think one does it. Yeah, they'll just get me all up. Okay, so now let's see. Well, I guess we kind of already, the next one was, uh, I was going to say, let's be nice for a second after the pet peeves and say what stuck out to me the most. But I mean, I feel like you've kind of answered that. You said I'm intelligent. You said I'm striking. But I mean, is there you anything? Are. You are. Oh, thank you. Is there anything that made you decide to want to be official? I went to London one time first and you didn't ask me to be your girlfriend. I haven't talked about it on the podcast. I, I wrote about it on an Instagram questionnaire once, but. There you- was a lot going on that trip. It was my birthday. You and me, my family. No, babe, the first time I came was oh, no, for four days. Oh, no, 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 no. That was when I did ask you. Yeah, yeah there was a lot going on. No, that, you... because I knew that would be like, that was like a little, that was like a little halftime show. <laughs> <laughs> so I came to London for the first time after Barcelona for four days. So that's fair. I literally just come. Okay, that's, to be fair, that's fair. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but how, tell them how you asked me to be my Shouldn't girlfriend. Shouldn't rush things. Uh, I'll tell them how you asked to be my girlfriend. Uh, <laughs> I think we just slurped down a couple of oysters and you were grabbing your champagne glass like the waiter was about to take it out of your hand and I thought this you is the know. perfect moment to ask you to be my girlfriend. To ask you to be my girlfriend. No, it was, um, it was a nice restaurant. Yeah, it was cute. And it was cute. And I knew we, 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 would, we went to a bar afterwards so I knew we'd go out and get a bit drunk. Yeah. And it'd be a fun did. night. Oh, that's where we saved the guy from his horrible Tinder date. Poor guy. R.I.P. Oh, the girl well. went to the bathroom and like just never came back. That is truly will scar a guy. There's anyone listening. If if you're on a date with someone and you just aren't vibing the date, just be honest and just say, "Listen, I'm gonna go you're home. A, you're a lovely person, but this isn't this isn't right for me. I'm just gonna go home, have a nice night. Don't drag it out and oh then God. bring random randomers over to the table no, and pretend like you're did, friends. She only did that because I called her. I called her in the bathroom. We saw her. We saw this guy and this girl. We you know when you're like at a restaurant, and you can tell. Last night when we were at the steakhouse we were at we were like oh what is that in front of us right here a first date because they're just like awkward the body language is awkward oh. right and so we were kind of saying like oh i wonder if this is their first date i was like this is definitely their first date and they were like the girl just did not look interested the guy looked like very nervous and then the girl gets up and goes to the bathroom and she's gone for a while and then she's gone for an obviously way too long amount and then james and i are like what the fuck did she just like dip? And so then the guy is sitting there by himself for 10 full minutes, if not longer. And the restroom did not have a long line. It was obvious. And so I remember in my head, I was like, dude, she's gone. She's not coming back. So I said, say something to him, like just like strike up a conversation. So like, we were like, Oh, what's that drink? It looks so good. Just to kind of like, you know, get his mind off of probably where it was. And we started chatting with him. And then another 10 minutes goes by. Now this girl's been gone for 20 minutes. And, and I said something like, w- maybe one of us were like, oh, where'd she go? And you he's like, what? thinking he'd be like, yeah, she did. She goes, she's just in the bathroom. I was like, I just, rem- oh. I just remembered. I remember speaking to her and I pretended well, that I that I created Hinge, no, this dating app. And you're, I was like, sk- you don't do this. On you're this. skipping steps. But yeah, you did Sorry, go but- really weird into that. <laughs> I just saw one big lie. So kind of no, because I wanted to well, make her feel bad without being mean to her. I wanted to make her feel bad too i go to the bathroom I'm like i'm gonna go see if this girl's in the bathroom she wasn't i'm like she left and then i do i see them like i hear one person in the bathroom and she's talking loudly to this other girl who she had just met clearly and she's like i'm on this horrible date and the girl's like ditch him and i was just like oh i want to come to the bathroom oh. so i'll be like he's a nice guy he's a nice lad but like he's just like nice like i just always picture but that just, being my little just, brother just exactly just have the balls have the balls like, he had to the just balls be to ask people. you to like a place while it was a very loud busy bar that probably wasn't a great spot to take a girl for the first Granted. time you met her but like he's, just like he's learned that lesson though. yeah which james did tell him <laughs> listen mate yeah you're um, taking a girl to a very expensive a bar that's very very loud who doesn't even like you like next time just go for a freaking coffee pizza. or yeah. something yeah but he um yeah basically the, i hear this girl and i think she had seen me and she saw that i was in there and then they decided to go back to the table but it was so weird and obvious because she tried to pull this thing where the girl that she just met in the bathroom acted like they were like really long time friends question what's an ideal first date for you like let's say we didn't meet in barcelona what and, and let's say we 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 did the traditional you know maybe i dm'd you or whatever text you and we were going to go on a first date what would you like 
Well, we talked about this last night a little bit. Like, we were at this really, really fancy steak restaurant last night, to which we saw a couple that we kind of thought that might be a first date. And in, what did you call it? Punchy? Punchy, yeah. You were like, I wouldn't go on a first date here. And I said, I would not really. The definition like, of punchy, as in something that's a, like, bit, too a much. bit above and beyond maybe what it like, should be. Like, it's just too much. Yeah. It's, it's over the top. It's like when you say, have you, not, have you never heard, like, for example, if someone said, ooh, like a lot of people would say, you're punching with me. It means that, you know, I'm out of your league. Oh, you, oh, okay. I was like, are you gonna say I'm out of your, you're out of my league? Um, no, we say we say you're batting out of your. Wait, what do we say? You're out of your league. But we say there's a term. Like she's punching. He's punching. There's a term. Everyone. Maybe you should. Maybe you guys can start listening. using punching. She's no, punching. everyone listening hates when I do this because I know they're screaming it in their cars right now. Yeah. Wait, cl- okay, okay, I'm over it. I'm over it. If you yeah. guys just message me, well, as you will. Um, anyways, yeah, she, I, my ideal date would not be going to like a really fancy steak restaurant. Just no. that's, I think that's a bit stuffy and I would just feel like I, I'm the kind of person that wouldn't want the guy to spend too much money and then I would feel weird that he spent so much money and then I'd feel the need to ask. Because that's another thing. When it comes to dating, it's not about Mm-mm. the flashy stuff. Like, people don't like, we don't care. People well, don't I care, would be you know? like, what I mean, are you trying I mean, some people would. Maybe some, some, some people some would. Some girls definitely would like that. I would be like, oh my God, this fucking guy, what is he trying to prove? I get it. We can both afford a nice steak restaurant. Yeah. Like, but also, like, where'd you go from there? Like, what are you going to do the next time? Like, it's Yeah, I think that's like something special. Like, last night was like special. We exactly. all went there. Um, my ideal first date would be if I like met a guy and he got my number, if he was like, we should wait, met a guy, met me. If I met you and I got your number and you lived in Nashville, I would, I, I like dinner. Yeah. But I mean, something cool, like some like cash casual like thai restaurant or like i wouldn't hate if you were like i was gonna get if you were like i was gonna get a bottle of wine and we were gonna go sit in the park and like chill on a blanket like i would do that yeah that's cute as well that's cute yeah. i mean i go like go for a walk get a coffee but no but see people say that people are like you should ask girls to get a coffee i think that is so i don't like that it feels like you're in a business meeting. I, yeah maybe that's maybe i'm just always yeah. grabbing coffee with people in like business but then on the flip settings. side you have dinner with someone if you don't like the the danger with that i think that's where you have to just judge that's not there's not danger i've been on no, dates no. before where i'm like bye and i've been on dates before where i'm like dinner was great you want to like let's okay continue. but if you i mean i personally i wouldn't book dinner with a girl that i think mm, i don't know how this could go so i just would let's go for drinks if we're hungry then we could get oh, some food oh, oh, I see as, in, as in if you're booking dinner you're locked in for that dinner until you've eaten all the food no to be fair i recently went on a date like okay not recently like a year ago <laughs> I, was, I, I was like who <laughs> no I, I talked about it on the podcast but i just thought about it, it was like a year ago i if y'all remember a while ago i talked about i went on this date and it was a drink and i just was like it was the it was the day before i saw kristen at the preds game anyways i went on this date and it was it was so boring like one of the first things he was like well a little bit about me he's like first of all i'm catholic which like great you're catholic but like i just like can't imagine that being like the the, the opener the opener yeah. and i was like okay <laughs> Yeah. Cool. yeah cool so anyways all i'm saying is it was benefit it was, without maybe he's just setting your expectations no i think he was i think he, was, he he will be so perfect for someone it wasn't me but all that being said it was drinks and after literally two drinks i was like i've got an early night i gotta go had it been dinner that would have been a lot longer well, exactly so you're right drinks are safe mm. but not everyone drinks your bitch ass don't really drink <laughs> <laughs> can you you can have an appetizer or a coke yeah let's go that'll be dead ringer i'm like not interested in this guy he just had some cheese sticks and a coke so if you met me and we were on a no, first date and kidding. i didn't drink you'd be like no i'm not dating you no i would expect you to drink and if you were like a little bit here and there i shouldn't feel like tonight i'd be like oh, okay cool mm. i wouldn't care about that mm. if you told me like i don't drink I, it, when i first met you i would have been like this is gonna be interesting yeah i mean we plowed through tequila when we met so we that we did um okay stereotypes of america that are now confirmed like, what did you think about America before you came here? And then what was confirmed by it? We eat everything with our hands. You eat everything with your hands. I think... You lick your fingers at restaurants. That's, that's because good. I've had chicken wings for pretty much every meal. Like well, that? I, like yeah. he's in a movie? Yeah. Well, Gross. I'm, well, I have to have 19 napkins then because I'm eating 19 chicken wings, so... You have been licking your fingers outside so of you chicken I could wings. probably... I mean, no, when? No, that's... In New York, when you're eating a club sandwich, you had sauce on your hands. Club sandwich, exactly. Using my fingers. I'm not using my cutlery and then going, <laughs> okay. am I? Just, no. let, just let me let my fingers. The sauce is, I told you the sauce is good here. I want to get it all he up. He is obsessed with the sauces in America. You have a favorite so far? 
I did catch myself the other day licking my fingers and then uh, like remember there was that video that got taken of us and we saw it now I'm in the background <laughs> yeah. just licking my fingers the, I was like okay maybe no, I do need to it stop was even doing worse it because so it, was, it was the bar we were at the bar was going around taking videos of people and he just said <laughs> <laughs> I was like look you're in here Shannon video. just death staring me across the table I'm like sauce is good <laughs> sauce is good babe no I, I think the the thing that's definitely confirmed two things mainly the first is that everything is just like supersized in America. Like every, you just do everything big. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Although I did have the biggest smoothie I've ever had in my entire life. And we had like five sips and it gone down, what, like a centimeter. And it's funny because he goes, oh, this has so much protein. He's like 40 grams of protein in one smoothie. This is amazing. And then yeah. it came to us and it, it was, was like- the size of Shannon's steering wheel. It was like a big gulp. And he was like, okay, well, no wonder it has 40 grams. It's like three smoothies in one. And I was like, yeah. But you guys do everything big. And, and on the plus side, like the sport out here is incredible. Sport? Like, yeah, so so you know the football and the hockey, like everything is big and exaggerated, and like, there's loads going on, and that's really cool. You said you loved at the hockey game, so at the New York Rangers game, just like at a baseball game, a basketball game, and definitely hockey games. In between innings, they have those little like games on the Megatron. That, like, yeah, like that they, is. So I've seen that. You see that all over TikTok and Instagram with these guys who do these like funky dances and like going down and like the, the kiss the cam and the kiss and, cam like, and stuff. Like that's so cool. And y'all don't do that. Oh, can you imagine the kiss cam in England? You'd be, they'd be like, oh no, not doing that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kissing you in public. Oh God! Oh God! No way! Even if they're married, God, the English is so like untouchy. It's crazy. Really? Yeah, the traditional English people—they don't. They're very untouchy feely. Really, it's, it's, but it's you're touchy feely. I know, but I'm not like a like a proper old traditional English guy. Yeah, but you just said English boy, born and raised. Yeah. Okay. Sure. But I am. You're, but you're different. Yeah, I'm not like a. Yeah. Anyway, so that's that's one thing, and and I think that goes along with like food and everything. Just you know, portions there's a confirmed are just big, aren't they? And just everything is big. Yeah. Big cars. That car that was like ten feet high and the wheels were on the floors. Like that is mental. It was like this massive. I I still truck. can't get my head over that. Imagine imagine if, if I saw that in London, I think people would freaking pass out. They'd be like, what's going on? <laughs> it was like a obviously it was really ridiculous. Imagine driving that back home. You're like, mom, dad, I got a new car. I'd be like, what have you it, done? It was like a lifted truck, but it was lifted like. Uh, this the height of another truck but you know feet. like ridiculous it was on broadway yeah might as was... well be in a plane <laughs> <laughs> james was distressed yeah about i was it. like i was like okay this guy must have a small yeah that's a thing anyway that and then i think secondly the people friendly yeah very friendly you thought that, and that it's was crazy it's, and but it's almost like this is it just kind of confirms how unfriendly people are just I, I wouldn't even say unfriendly just cold people are in in it's it's not all of England because if you go to North England, people are generally friendlier. I think it might just be a London thing, but like even just like it's people, like the hustle and bustle, pe maybe people. Pe yeah, but people just like even just the people serving, like the waiters and stuff, like having conversations with you. And like you remember yesterday, you thought she was going to come sit down and have dinner with us. Like that's how friendly they are. I mean, sometimes it can be too much, but you just don't sometimes get that. Sometimes you I wish like that. they would just yeah. That was she was a little get bit addled. yeah yeah. I was like, listen, you ever been in a restaurant where they just? I mean, it's so at, at first you're like, oh my god, it's so nice, and then like after a while you're like bruh <laughs> yeah, you said yeah, you said you said wait i was gonna finish telling my story and i was like thinking someone's missing from the table it was the waitress she had sat there so long like yes. she had sat at our table not sat but like she'd been next to our table for so long chatting with us that by the time she left i was telling a funny story or maybe in a grace telling a story and i almost stopped her to say wait wait wait, we're missing someone and i looked around the table and mike and taylor were there and grace and austin were there and james and i were there and i go holy shit i literally for i thought we were missing someone because yeah. she'd been sitting there for so long um so yeah the, the friendly really nice and that, so but nice. that's you no know, but that is that is it's particularly if you're not from here and i know it's typical that an englishman comes to america and everyone's like oh wow like where are you from yeah but, americans you know, like, love even, an accent even when i had the gimbal out the other day in, in in broadway and that old man was like hey man what's that that's like well, that's so cool like you would never get that anyway. like that was so sweet i was <laughs> like oh it's you know it's like it's like he stepped into the future i've got this like gimbal camera it's which right is, there he has this little it's really like cool. it's a t it's literally this big and it's just like a camera to record almost like a gopro kind of thing yeah and yeah this older man was like hey man like, that hey was buddy so sweet and what then, is and then that he, thing and then he just turns around and just carries on drinking his pint and going back to his friends and, I was you, like, and nah. you tell him what it is and you show him and then he goes well i'll be damned yeah. and, then, <laughs> and then walks back and james I comes over to me it. he goes well i'll be damned and i was like is that what he said and he goes oh yeah. i love that moment that was, that was like a highlight of my trip oh like, my gosh <laughs> Sorry, Shannon. Billy no. Bob telling you he likes it, your gimbal. <laughs> no, it was just that everything about that moment was nice. It was very pure. So, yeah. So those are the stereotypes that are confirmed. Are there any bad ones? Like, do we? Do you think no one has manners? 
Yeah, your manners aren't great. Your manners are a little much. I wasn't asking about my manners. You asking me about the American manners. Well, now I'm telling you about the British manners. You can't have too much, too many manners. I think you eating French fries with a fork is a bit bizarre. Really? Yeah. Confirmed. Producer Courtney shaking her head. You eating the French fries with a fork was unconstitutional and jarring and flat out weird. <laughs> okay. And I didn't then. like it. It made everyone around you Well, you know what? I'm going to keep on doing it. I might even use my knife as well. I'll chop them in half. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And then I'll lick my fingers afterwards <laughs> with nothing on them. <laughs> You're sick. Um, no, uh, yeah, manners, a, bit, a cultural difference. If you, I mean, I eat French fries also with my fingers sometimes, but just sometimes I use a fork. Okay. I mean, your manners overall are pretty good. I, I, the loudness, you guys are loud. Oh, Americans in general? Yeah, you are loud. You got a lot to say. You don't really notice it though when you're here because everyone is loud. Just the volume of the room very quickly yeah. goes up. I've also taken you to like Broadway, sports bars, like places like that. Maybe we'll see in Charleston and like the low country. We'll see we'll see in South Carolina if it, if it's as loud. True. An overwhelming amount of people simply want to know what our favorite sex position is. I tried not to get to, but I mean, do you do, do you have one? Mom, dad, if you're listening to this, just please fast forward 15 seconds i said we weren't gonna ask it earlier you said you could answer and say it was all good um i think it's ever changing you know yeah you keep it interesting i like I, I mean i'll just say it like like missionary is just good and intimate underrated it's underrated everyone's like oh missionary i'm like you're not a porn star you don't need to fucking turn them upside down and bend them over backwards like just just underrated. do it the way like we're meant to do it yeah i like that a lot okay well in, in, in the mornings though we don't want to anyway um no just in the mornings with morning breath involved you want to just stay clear of oh, that oh i see and what you're so... saying that is such a shame because you know something about me that um, i'm going to be very upfront and honest with you guys about i know for a fact my morning breath is worse than others <laughs> um i just had this conversation <laughs> how did you know that i know i just had this conversation with anna grace confirm. because we were discussing morning sex and she was saying it's like her favorite and i was like it's i feel like it's a lot of people don't love morning sex. I love morning sex. Well, I just wake up very horny all the time. So. I, I just really, there's something like primal about it. Like this man just woke up and just like walked Men, me. this is factual. Men's testosterone levels are highest in the morning. Okay. Oh, is that why you guys have morning wood? <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Um, so I was saying to her and she said the same thing. She's like, oh, you don't know. And I'm like, no, I know. I know because my whole life I've been sleeping next to friends. I've been sleeping next to my sister. But no one's morning breath is nice. No, no. But I know mine's worse because I smell it. I taste it. It's Maybe bad. Maybe if you didn't sleep with your mouth open, it wouldn't be so bad. And then I thought to myself, that's got to be it why. It all makes sense. That's got to be why because it's so bad. So I don't, that is the one thing I don't like about the morning because I do wish I could get up and brush my teeth, but that would totally kill the moment. Yeah, and I think you're just a bit weird doing that. Yeah, but like I know my morning brother's like, bad. I come back and I'm like, have you ever thought it's just really bad? Listerine. I sometimes I've had some whiffs and I've been like, bad, right? Okay, yeah, but it's uh, mine's bad as well. I'm sure not you've... as bad as mine. I Aww. know for sure. Sometimes I even think to myself, damn it, I, I wish his breath smelled more because <laughs> <laughs> I just feel so insecure about mine. It's so bad. It's got to be from sleeping with my mouth open. Yeah, but uh, so like I, babe, I wouldn't worry too much about that. Listen, everyone's breath smells <laughs> in the morning. We just keep our heads turned the other side. Okay, fine. Do you, outside of morning sex, do you have a favorite memory with us? Of us two? Yeah, yeah. I'm not talking about sex anymore. <laughs> yeah, oh, sorry. I was, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was just thinking about morning sex. Um, favorite memory? My mind went to Cash Kai because I just thought that was so pretty. That was, yeah. That was that was pretty special. I think, yeah, like sitting on the balcony and just smoking cigars. That was or the Cotswolds with was cute. in the field was another one of mine. Yeah, you can't steal mine. Take your, no, I think you know one one big one that stands out for me is when we were in Soho House in Barcelona. I remember we were like holding each other, like talking, and then after like forty minutes, we we're like we literally like haven't let go of each other. Yeah, I still well, remember who said that it? Did you say that? Yeah, I was, like, like, I was like, I was like, I was like, look at us all over each other. Like, have we been holding hands the whole time we've been talking? Yeah. And you, I was like, wait, yeah, sorry. And you're like, no. I'll if we had told people who were sitting around us that we'd met like two days ago, they'd be like, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so who else? That, yeah. That was funny. Okay. That was like your favorite memories. All right. And oh, someone was wondering, which I think I know the answer to this. Do you always, so something I talked about on the podcast was the reason I was traveling to see you so much before you came here was because you'd kind of already had all these trips planned, mm. which I think is something you do do. Yeah. Do I you do. I do do. I do travel a lot. So that wasn't like a, someone was like, did he just have a hot boy summer planned or <laughs> does he normally travel this, uh, this much? Which you've made me be so much more of a planner as producer Courtney knows, and probably it's very frustrated by, it. I'm just not a planner. And now that I'm signing you're, with, oh wait, this wait, is an announcement. Not, signed thought, with Dear Media. 
It says, Dear Media, which we did talk about in the first episode, actually. But um, So you're one. not a planner? Before you met me, no. Really? Yes. I thought you were a serial planner. Um, I'm serial organizer. Right. Levelist. It's not the same thing? No. I would like you mean like, like planning trips and stuff when no like when like I jumped on that trip to Barcelona with Marissa a week before right when when people it, it used to give me such bad anxiety when someone would be like hey which all my a lot of my friends have nine to fives and regular jobs so like they would be like or not regular jobs but just like not social media kind of stuff not work from home vibes and they have to of course plan their vacations months in advance to take off time do whatever and like they'll literally be like hey do you my friend Brantley all the time she's like you want to go to Vegas with me in March I'm like bitch that just gave me so much anxiety no I'm not telling you I can do something in March yeah that's nuts no but but you plan stuff like that well I guess I've just planned my birthday next July yeah you I'm in a group chat with him and all of his (laughs) mates for next July when there's 30 people involved you have to that's fair but I truly, yeah, planning, I've never been a planner until I met you. I've started really, I, I, well, and here's the thing too. It gives you way less stress in life. Well, especially with Courtney, whenever I'm like planning podcast episodes and stuff, I'm like, I'm going to be here on these dates, these dates, these dates, rather than me. Well, like it, when I went to Spain, I had to tell Courtney, sorry, going to Spain. Bye. No, but exactly. It, but it also like planning, ironically, and people can't get their head around it, gives you more freedom. So like if you've got stuff scheduled and you're doing stuff, you then actually have more freedom because your days are structured. Yeah, that's if you're, true. If you're just like... No, you're right. Randomly like, you know, rumbling around and just doing this and doing this here, there and everywhere, you actually lose a lot of valuable time because you're just constantly reacting to yeah. stuff. That said, I think it's also good. We have to plan our trips because particularly I'm coming here and you're coming over there and you need some structure when a trip's like this. But I think spontaneity is also important as well. Like I'm sure we'll do trips in the future where... We spontaneously like go here, spontaneously go there. You're holding a little yawn there. <laughs> I just saw your mouth slowly opening and your eyes watering. I was like, am I boring you, babe? I hate talking about planning. <laughs> you just, oh, that's like, it's really- like, you know, when you're a kid and you're at the front of the class and you're like trying to hold in a yawn and you don't want the teacher to see you. I just saw your eyes <laughs> welling up. I was like, here she goes. I didn't want to be rude. <laughs> Yeah, structuring you, your days you know does allow you to have more freedom. I feel like I was in a TED let, talk. Let, let's move on. Are you excited for our trip to South Africa? Yeah. Does it bother you that I don't know geography? Mm, no, I, yeah, that was, <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think that's another thing. And it's, I mean, America's a big place, but American geography of other parts of the world isn't great. And is I, that, is I that hate fair to, speak, to say? Yes. I hate to speak for other Americans. I'm sure a ton of Americans will listen to this and be like, that is not fucking true. That's such a generalization. But uh, as an American, I'm going to generalize the fuck out of Americans because I can. And um, I think, well, it's a little unfair. I will give us some, some, uh, an excuse. You guys travel to fucking Italy in two hours. You can go to Portugal in an hour and a half. It's so lucky. We, I could tell you where the 50 states were because that's where we travel. It's very expensive to travel to Europe. I didn't travel to Europe until I made my own. My parents weren't taking me to Europe. So when I made my own money, I went to Italy and I, I couldn't tell you where Italy was on a map. Sure. But I knew I wanted but equally, to go there. My geography of America isn't amazing either. Yeah. Until but I, mean, I met you. But all that being said, we are, I think, a little bit uncultured swine in the sense that like yeah we don't look into we're very like america so we look at it was america. funny that you thought south africa was like six hours away i mean i was yeah so wrong you got a big old trip there i was like oh goodness i'm gonna be in the plane for maybe even 10 hours like i'm gonna be a 10 hour trip no bitch yeah that's that's the that's the leg from london to south africa 24 hours yeah wow it'll be worth it but back to your point i think I've but I've grown up in a family like my parents they're not super flashy they like spending their money on on travel like I've always traveled since I was younger so that has made me always want to see other places other cultures yeah and I love it my and well, and to be fair like I said you guys are very lucky to have everything <clears throat> also, right at your yeah, doorstep and London is at the, the basically the middle of the world right so yeah. we can go whereas like I've seen a, I've been to so many states in America but you know what's crazy is my mom's travel agent my parents have gone to literally every country together which and now that i'm getting older i'm like facts like they did everything and then i swear the second they had kids they're like huh, yeah we'll go to florida sounds nice which they had three kids but and they were balling on a budget but like i, I mean they they lived their lives you mean they traveled everywhere in america or just across no, the world no they went they've been to ev- everywhere oh really yeah my parents as a couple went everywhere they had kids they were well, like well maybe they thought that you'd meet a nice englishman and could take you around the world that they did mom and pops did you think that i'm really happy i did can we go to greece 
Yeah. Someone asked where uh, our dream destination Why are you guys was. obsessed with Greece? I'm a, if there's a Grecian listening to this, they're going to be pissed. No, Greece is a beautiful country, but like every person I've spoken to, even this trip, I'm like, have you been to Europe? They're like, no, but I really want to go to Greece, man. I'm like, what? It's beautiful. What? Yeah, it is, but there's other places. Where do you think like, we want to go? Greece, 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 Greece. We want to go to Greece. There's a lot of islands. We can go to Greece. Great movie. Americans are obsessed but, with Greece. But Greece is also like a bit of a shithole. Like there are places. No, it is. It is. It's 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 its economy is terrible. It's it's old. It's been. But there are some beautiful parts. Don't get me wrong. Like all the like James, islands and stuff. Don't be a Debbie Downer. Every part, every country, and every city right, okay, has we'll, shitty parts. We'll go to Santorini where all the couples propose, and you know. It'll be fun. <laughs> yeah. Babe, it'll be fun and beautiful. Where do you? What's your dream destination? He, he fucking loves Cape Town. You yeah. have to sell me on it. I mean, every okay. To be just fair, just wait until you get there. I told Mary, I told Mary Carlo yesterday when we were uh, at watching football. She said she has like several friends who have uh, in America who are obsessed with Cape Town, and I was like, James wants to like live there. She goes, they all say that they all say they want to live in Cape Town. I'm yeah, like, I can live. I can live there, but it's it's a cool place to be for a bit. I want to go to Bali. Quick, quick question: What do you think he just said? Bali. Yup. Bali. Yup. He's saying Bali. Why do you add R's to stuff? Bali. What do you say? Bali. Bali. Huh? Bali. Bali. <laughs> Wait. Ba- Bali. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to say it without an R. Bali. 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 He wants you to said get- it with an R. Say it again. <laughs> Bali. How is Bali? <laughs> okay. That is exactly the same. I'll let the listeners decide. Whatever. It's not the same. But you, he does really want to go to Bali, and I do want to go to Bali as well. Um... I, that that looks beautiful. Yeah, I, I it's follow a lot, this. It's a long I way though. Follow this. Yeah, it is. I follow this YouTuber that like um, is Australian, and her and her boyfriend like live in Bali. Got a dog, and then like built a house, and it was like obviously much more cost effective to build this like mansion in Bali, and it was gorgeous, and it like made me really wanna. At the end of the YouTube video, they did like who was it? Gypsy Lust. At the end of the video, they like said how much everything cost, and I was like, that cost that. Oh my mm, gosh. Mm. But I think tra- I think traveling is it's it's really important because it gives you gives you like so much perspective on the way other people live yeah you know but it's 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 definitely harder for americans to travel because you have to it's yeah, a big could, trip we could like and also you guys don't get it. holiday gee you guys don't get holiday like people who work for big companies americans notoriously we for what we know you just don't take holiday you really just, like, hardly get any time off that's right the grind mm-hmm. doesn't stop babe well, that's why we're the most yeah. powerful country in the world. Oh, here we go. I always say this to him. <laughs> here we go. I say something, I'm like, I don't know. We're the most powerful country in the world, babe. I mean, at the moment, you're, yeah, compared to the UK. You're and the uh, then when the pound slipped below, like, ha- like so far below the dollar. Yeah, uh, classic. The day I get to America and I haven't been in years and it's like notifications all on my phone saying the pound hits the lowest it's ever been ever against the dollar. I was like, perfect. Um, yeah, I, there was this really funny meme. I think I, I don't remember where I saw it, maybe Barcelona or something where it was like, because uh, obviously they call soccer football and they think Americans are funny for calling it soccer. And I was like, uh, the it, well, I sent him the screenshot of like the pound versus the dollar and at the top it said, it's called soccer now. <laughs> Very funny. Funny. Funny, haha. Um, okay. So how do we communicate through disagreements? Well, we've had a couple. Yeah. Before. Someone was like, are y'all not in the honeymoon phase? And I'm like, no, we're still in the honeymoon phase. But like, we've definitely had, we've, uh, it would be weird if we hadn't. Yeah. We like lived in La La Land. Yeah. I feel like we're good at arguing. We are because we don't. Your dad brought this up when we were at dinner, actually. Remember, he was like, I'm curious to see how you guys will fight. Yeah. And we were like, we have. Remember, we had actually read for I was like. Yeah. Fine. You yeah you got a little you you a little sassy in the car yesterday when we were when we were arguing you immediately just did the old you did the old tactic deflect straight back to James well well you do this back home I'm like we're not he talking about that he told me not to text and home. drive which is fair I should not text and drive and I and to no the, I just more like just pay attention to and the to road. your point I immediately go you do it yeah <laughs> so like that's I'll, in yeah, an argument well, I don't. that's like being like you started it it's like not a good yeah. response yeah. I had, to, I had to, I had to, I had to, that was, that was the one time I was like, I had to say it again and again and again. If you just go, okay, yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I was like, yeah. I, little I'm sorry. stubborn, little stubborn Shannon. But, <laughs> but I think if we were to have like a proper argument, we're both, we, we understand how, how it works. I don't think we'd ever insult each other. I don't think we'd ever Take like stoop to that. I think we'd just try and understand each other. I think I'm just always, always, always trying to put myself in other person's shoes. So if someone comes oh, you to you weren't me, yesterday. I put myself right in your shoes where you text and drive as well. Um, so I, I, I think in situations like when you're arguing with your partner, one, it's like, 
good to remember that y'all are on the same team. Like at the end of the day, you don't need to win an argument. Like people get this like yeah. win or lose mentality. And I'm like, y'all are on the same team. Also, you're different people. Like yeah. you're gonna think differently about things. You're gonna clash about things. That yeah. is so normal. The worst is when people go, oh, we don't argue. I'm like, well, that's, that's weird, weird as well. Like, I, if someone says to me, I'd be like, that's Yeah, so and also weird. like there's gonna be things I'm sure because we don't live together, so it's difficult, but I'm sure there'll be like some things that we pick up from each other. We're like, oh, that's kind of annoying. But yeah. I always want you to just tell me and be honest. Yeah, way. yeah, yeah, I will. Yeah. Got a list ready for you, babe. No, I'm kidding, I don't yet. Um, I think I've always tried to put myself in other people's shoes and I try to think like, because I never want to gaslight someone. I never want to be like, like if you came to me with something and I was like, what, why does that bother you? I don't do that. I think like, why do I think this bothers him? If he is bothered oh, by this. Oh, that's actually the worst gaslighting when someone says, oh my God, like, are you crazy? Why is that such an issue with you? Yeah, like, like that, that is, is so weird. If that you, you said that to me, that. I'd, oh. Well, I'd it's just cruel to do that. It's just not nice to do it to anyone. Like no one wants to feel like, like not They're, credible yeah. in their feelings. Like you're allowed to feel however you want. And yes, there are certainly times where I'm sure I'll do it. I'm sure you'll do it. Everyone does it in a relationship where they are, they are being dramatic, but don't, you don't have to look at them and be like, you're being so dramatic. Like, Apart from when you eat a jalapeno and I'm like, you're being dramatic and then I eat it. Let me tell you guys, we in New York City go That's to Carbone. Let me, we're going to take a quick little sidebar. We argue well. I think the fights we've gotten into, I'm sure we'll have some more like tougher ones down the line. Sure. So far, I think we're just like mature and communicative. We go to Carbone in New York. It took me forever to get the uh, reservation. Thank God I had someone come through. My friend Candy shouts out. She helped me get the reservation. It, the place is just, I'm like why is it so hard to get one is it overhyped i was uh talking to my friend alex who was like it's actually not overhyped it's so fucking good and i was like okay we'll see we'll see we go i will say 10 out of 10 restaurant the service was great the atmosphere was a vibe it was super cool you felt cool while you're there the food phenomenal however we get this dish for an appetizer the octopus grilled octopus it was gorgeous it was delicious it was some of the best octopus i've ever unbelievable eaten unbelievable octopus if you're an octopus fan really delicious cooked to wait perfection. wait two years to get a reservation at carbone and have it there and have it there so um there's these thin little i love spice i put you he laughs at me because i dump fucking chili pepper flakes on everything because oh, she's in the water i asked for a side of jalapenos i mean i love when i eat burgers i get a, a cup of fresh jalapenos thick bad boys seeds in them plop on my mouth yes they're hot but like i love that shit right there's the thinnest thinnest sliced to what we thought was jalapeno bright green in the shape of a jalapeno in the octopus so as one does i was so excited i saw this i got it it didn't have any seeds any membrane nothing in it and i grab it and i eat put it in my mouth it it literally lit my ass on fire to the point that like i just explained i love spice i would never react this way i was like taken aback i was like that's so hot that is so hot that is so hot and he's like yeah, hey, I'm just talking as much as I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm like, babe, come on, like you're embarrassing. And I was like, I wasn't making a scene. This like, is an Italian restaurant. We're not at some like curry house. I was just like, it is so hot. You don't understand. I'm like drinking water. I'm like eating bread. I'm like, it is just so hot. I'm I'm not making a scene per se, but I'm definitely like, I can't stop talking about it for a full minute and a half to two minutes, right? James tells me at one point, didn't like this. He says, baby, I think he's just being dramatic. And I go, you eat one you eat there's one right there you eat it you eat it and he was like it's a jalapeno no I'm, i mean i'm good i don't need to eat a jalapeno. i think your words were you eat it or you're a pussy <laughs> <laughs> i'm pretty sure you said that i don't think i said that yeah i think you did and then it was just the, the second part sound like something i would say the, the second part okay maybe not those words but you said like don't, otherwise you, i might you, have been like oh no you, you not? did you did say maybe that maybe i said pansy I don't it, no, it wasn't as a man a pussy it wasn't as aggressive as that you were like oh you're a pussy you know I, maybe like, i was like don't be a pussy little eater. yeah yeah he's maybe like, yeah. i said it like that that's okay, what so, set me off i was like so he's like fine okay fair maybe i said that but not in a mean way so no, i no, in like a sure. jestful way so he eats this tiny thin skinny little jalapeno he even like didn't have any seeds in his either now when i say I didn't cause a scene. I just talked for two minutes. This man. I was acting like a little pussy. <laughs> I was in trouble. caused a scene. I was in a he, terrible way. Oh, he told me he needed to walk outside and get fresh air. He told me we had already ordered our mains, the fucking spicy rigatoni, vodka rigatoni that's everyone talks about. That is so, I mean, the meal was so expensive, no overpriced, but it was delicious. He tells me he doesn't know if he's going to be able to eat the mains. When the pot, he goes, when the pasta comes, I don't know if I'm going to be able That's to when eat I regretted it. ordering sparkling water because everything was just fizzy. Oh yeah. He loves ordering sparkling water and I hate it. Um, so yeah, he's like, he's losing 
his ever loving mind. I'm not as good as Spice, and I because I just yeah, it backfired massively. And and, and I am um, borderline crying from laughter. Can't li- couldn't have been happier because he's literally been like, hey, I think you mean magic," <laughs> and then ate it and was like. Oh, it's like, oh, oh, so he could tell. Oh, I, I mean, it was lesson. so crazy. And then it did, I go, well, then I started feeling bad. And then I like really was like, is he dead ass not going to eat the mains? Like, did we come all the way to, did I do carbone and he's, he's like going to leave and take some fucking fresh air? No, was, no, that, that would have never have happened. He didn't do I that. I was putting stuff down. But he definitely drank a lot of water, ate a lot of bread. And then it did after like five minutes go away. But we found out that it was not a jalapeno. We asked what were those peppers? And they said it was spicy. It was some name for this Italian pepper and you don't eat them they're just garnishes i said it was one of the spiciest peppers like in the world i mean but you also guys, like i'm from south carolina i've eaten like random really hot things this wasn't the spiciest thing i've ever had in my life but it was just like but this okay but this is worldly hot. the problem i have in america is, is i've been i've been brought up to finish everything on my plate right and Our everything portions. in and, and everything in front of me because you don't want to waste food now out here it's a little bit harder when the portions are ginormous but when you see like if you probably if I didn't see you eating those, I probably would have cleaned them up anyway at some point. Yeah. It was a matter of time. Thank God you didn't eat them all at once. Where was the warning? You know what, babe? We, you don't like as much spice, but we, yeah, the, the portions and everything are different here in America and that lit our ass on fire. So if you go to Carbron, have the octopus, but like just be very weary of those little peppers. We are going to wrap this up, but I have an interesting question that made me think and I was like, huh? And then I was like, no, I answered that in my head already. So someone said do you guys feel being in long distance relationship do you guys feel pressure to create more content when you're together like do you ever feel like you have to like like take a bunch of pictures and videos of each other and then someone said like because y'all both do social media do you ever feel pressure to post him and i thought about that i was like maybe and then i was like no i think what it is is that and i definitely have had this thought before um every time you leave i always wish i had more photos and like pictures to look back on because when we are gone for a month all I do is like if I miss you I like go to my camera roll and I like look at pictures from Portugal or I like look at pictures of London and so I definitely do feel if we lived here if we lived together I don't think I would feel the scarcity of like needing to like take these memories of you but my friend said this yesterday she goes I've never seen you so in the moment before she goes it's so cute to see you with James you're so in the moment so I do find myself not posting in real time like i find myself like taking all these cute pictures and videos and then looking at my uh phone i had a lot of people yell at me in my dms being like where are your story updates i'm like shit sorry because i'm just like having so much fun that i'm not really thinking about posting but even if we do post it's not like contrived and set up and we've been talking no. about it for hours and, and like trying to get into position and no. figure Unless out we're a caption. A TikTok with Anna Grace. Then yeah. we're all getting in position, yeah, yeah. baby. <laughs> but even that was quick. But yeah, it's it's very natural. But I think, again, that's just how we are with our social media anyway. It's very organic. Yeah, and we are, you're not an accountant and I'm not a nurse. So it's- But also you're not- the Our kind brains of- work in the sense of, con- like I, my brain always, if yeah. I was just with my friends at lunch, my brain is still going content, con- like my brain just works like that that's yeah. i'm yeah. i'm like that is at the forefront of my mind and not in like a shitty weird way where you're like oh my god it's that your whole life but it is like it's a massive part of my life so i definitely am always thinking if, about if it. you were the kind of influencer who was all the time with their phone like uh yeah, no, like talking and then wait, wait 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 can we you know we were late for everything because you were trying to film stuff and and try and get it all perfect that, that yeah. would irritate me but no it's i don't care like about that. stuff being perfect so yeah. usually yeah because that's true we don't care about the perfect we're not like contrived it's with our real. content so usually i'm like oh hold on i'm gonna record this and then you're like okay and then we record it and then we go exactly. i'm not like i didn't look good in that one i didn't look good in that yeah. one i didn't look good in that one yeah. i'm like fuck it yeah okay yeah. but i think i think i think people people can see i mean i've had even my parents and friends being like it's it's i've had so many messages obviously because i'm over here and all my friends are basically living through so, me yeah, right? yeah. No, vicariously but they're all like your stories are great because it's so just there in the moment and yeah. natural it's not well, the person that said the question actually wasn't even being mean they were just like do you feel pressure to take photos and i was like i don't feel pressure i just feel like i definitely want the i want to have yeah and you're good like that you're good you know because we it's not just our phones we've got the gimbal we've got disposable black and white we've got disposable color we've got everything no but it's great because you're very on it and it's like and and you capture good moments and then you remember like after our boss uh uh portugal trip we look back at the photos and all those polaroids they're amazing i know yeah we had been back from portugal for like two weeks and then i got the film back and i was like oh like even just like like taking a picture of me like in in bed like in my boxes like it's just like quite cool you looked hot (laughs) 
Um, okay, and then we will wrap it up with, I think, what will be very interesting. James has pulled up a list of English words. Sorry, he's pulled up a list of words that mean the same thing but have totally different he has pulled up a list of words. Colin Shannon, you got this. He has pulled up a list of words that mean the same things, but are different words for English people and different words for Americans. Okay. Okay. We're just, I'm in no, no particular, I'm just going to pick out some good ones. Okay. And and this is, I mean, these are the kind of the, the more obvious ones that you guys might have heard. So, uh, starter. Starter? Yeah. We're, like, having, we're having starters. Yeah. What do you say in America? appetizers there we go let's play it this way we call them starters too do you yeah appetizers y'all call someone being hot fit that's y funny yeah y'all also y'all is just i almost said that to my team today i was like how y'all doing y'all is easy to pick up and i just had to i was like you're english james how are you how how no, it's easy to pick up are. it flows nicely it shortens the word and i remember this just unlocked a memory of barcelona the first night we met you were like I cannot get over you saying y'all. And you told me you read my text messages in, in my accent. Yeah, I still do. Every time I see y'all, I Cute. say y'all. Y'all. Closet. We would call it a closet. Yeah. Wardrobe. Oh, yeah. Y'all call it a wardrobe. Wardrobe. Uh, He'll be like, babe, I need to put more clothes in my wardrobe. I'm like, what? It's okay. You say drugstore. We say chemist. That is so weird. The chemist or pharmacy. We would call it a pharmacy, but we would also call it going to the drugstore. And if someone said I'm going to the chemist, I'd be like, are you working for Taylor at Budari? <laughs> like, oh, that would be so weird. Okay, so I remember we were eating this once and you're like, James, do you, do you want any eggplant? And I was like, what is eggplant? <laughs> which, is, <laughs> which is aubergine, aubergine. You call it aubergine? Eggplant. That sounds like my grandma's friend. <laughs> that is, that. Uh, kid pass is a is Eggplant? Name. That was weird to you? Baby, we're going to take the elevator upstairs. The lift. You call it a lift? The lift. What do you call arugula? The lettuce. What do you call arugula? Spinach. No. No. Rocket. Rocket. When we were in English, rocket. there was all of these like sandwiches that were the like arugula. turkey, ham, tomato, and rocket. I was like, what? And then there'd be a rocket salad. I'm like, what the fuck is rocket? And it would come out and I'm like, arugula? It says it all on the bags in the grocery store too. It says rocket. Crazy. Weird. Liquor store. Off, you, off license. What? Let's go to the off license. Off license? Off, off license, yeah. Li I don't know why. That's a weird one, actually, from our side. Off license, no idea. Pantyhose. I need to put my pantyhose on your tights. You call them all tights? We have Just tights. tights. But Just tights. I would call them pantyhose. Shopping cart. What do you call it? Shopping trolley. A shopping trolley? <laughs> now it sounds like Harry The Potter. best one is just like sidewalk. Like, he thinks this is so crazy. Like you're just walking, like Americans just like you just sidewalk. Like you're walking on the side. Sidewalk just it's called a pavement. Yeah. What well, you drive <laughs> on the pavement? If I said I was walking, I was walking on the if pavement. If you were driving on be the like, pavement, okay? I'd be like, you're a lunatic. You're gonna run someone over. You don't even have sidewalks in Nashville anyway, really. Yeah, my road doesn't have sidewalks. Yeah. Um, sneakers, trainers. That's what do you call that, sneakers? That's, sneakers, trainers. trainers. I'm actually saying some of these things in American now. When I'm over here, the subway, London Underground. Y'all call it the underground? The underground because it is underground. Checks out. Sweater. Jumper. Oh, one time I FaceTimed him and I was in a sweater and he was like, oh, I love that little jumper you've got on. And I was like, what? <laughs> I was thinking like overalls would be jumpers or like a jumpsuit. And he was like, your jumper. Sweater. We're going to go on vacation. Holiday. Good work. Zip code. What do we say? Oh, postcode. Yeah. We call it a postal code. I'd say that's pretty much it. There's one at tic-tac-toe. Do you know what that is? Yeah, of course. <laughs> okay. It's a little game. Noughts and crosses. Oh, is that what y'all call yeah, it? Yeah, because you're putting in crosses and noughts. Tic-tac-toe. <laughs> you know, okay, but with that one, it's got nothing to do with it. Normally, you guys basically just like put a word in front of like sidewalk. Uh, tic-tac-toe. I'd, I'd say those are the main ones. Parking lot, car park, pants, trousers. Baby, can you put on some new pants? I don't like those ones. I told him to wear. I'm like, my boxes are fine. I told yeah. him to wear. Uh, what did I say? What did I say? I said wear um, slacks. And he goes, babe, what are slacks? Yeah, what are slacks again? <laughs> you would say trousers. You would say they're smart trousers. Right. It's, would they say smart? Like he's like, uh, we were going to Cane Prime, which is a nice steak restaurant. And he was like, oh, should I put on a, a smart black t-shirt? 
And I was like, yeah, put on a smart black t-shirt. Do you know what bangs is? Bangs? Bangs. You know that. That's a word. Bangs. What do you mean if a girl Context. Cut it- put it into context for me. Okay. I just got a haircut. I got bangs. Got bangs. A f- I got a f- bangs. A fringe. <laughs> It's called a fringe. See, let me see this list because you're missing good ones. <laughs> no, that was that you was that, that was that was a good one. Bangs, are. bangs. Mom, I just want to get up some bangs. You call apartments flats. Yeah. Ch- this is the hardest one. You call chips crisps. That and you confuses call me. Fries chips. Yeah. When I was on the airplane going to London and I wanted a bag of chips, I said, "Do you guys have any chips?" And she goes, "No, sorry." I was looking at a guy eat chips. I was like, "Crisps." You don't? And she was like, "No, sorry." And I was like. The ones like he's eating, and she goes, "Oh, crisps!" And I was like, <laughs> "Like I was just asking for her for some Listen, a side when of fries when on the when plane." When you're on a BA flight, an English BA flight, you gotta speak English language. Fine, you call cookies biscuits. If I was making a a, a, a batch of cookies in that oven right now, you say you made some biscuits. Yeah, because I think cookies are like cookies, <laughs> like 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 with like chocolate chip in them, like yeah. the round ones, cookies. Yeah, no, biscuits you can have like digestive biscuits or like McVitties. <laughs> I don't even know what you're talking about. Do you know what one thing I'm actually saying to say a lot is the restroom. Can I use the restroom? What do you say? The loo? Yeah, the loo. <laughs> the restroom. The bathroom. What about uh, you call a diaper a nappy? Yeah. You, what do you call? What would you call uh, something a little baby sucks on? A dummy. A pacifier. A passy. A pacifier. That sounds like some kind of like scientific like tool. <laughs> like it sounds like you're something using like a spaceship. A pacifier? Pass me the pacifier. <laughs> <laughs> You say pass me the dummy. Yeah, be a little dummy. <laughs> That's mean. Yeah, sometimes I'll put a dummy in your mouth. No. You're talking too much. Oh, if I'm like, we're not going, period. Period, the end, we're not going. He'll go, we're not going, full stop. I've never said that. You've said full stop. Full stop. One time you said. One time I did say full stop. It's not a common thing. It was inappropriate, but full you said stop. something full stop. Period. Yeah, but I quite like that when you guys say period. Period. Then I know shit's real. How confusing is this? If you went to private school in America, it's called public school. And if you go to public school in America, it's called state school there. Oh, what would you call something that I put on after I get out of the shower? Dressing gown. <laughs> Robe. <laughs> He's like, oh, that's a cute little dressing gown you got on. <laughs> This accent has got to stop. Ew. What do you call braces? What do you mean? like? Oh, it says we call them suspenders. We don't call that. Yeah, suspenders. We call, we, them, we call them suspenders. Them, we call them braces. Oh, I was thinking of braces on your teeth. Yeah, but we call them braces. We also call things on our teeth braces. But you call suspenders braces? Yeah. Interesting. Um, knots and crosses is funny. Tic-tac-toe. Oh, what do you call uh, the back of your car, the trunk? The boot. The boot. Um, and then... Do you know what though? These are all like, these are obviously like common ones, right? But we, there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of slang that you say and a lot of slang that I say that you just have no idea about. Wait, this is really weird. What would you call something that you're going to wash yourself with in the shower? A scrub? A brush? It says y'all call them flannels. Oh, yeah. Flannel. Like a face flannel. A flannel. It's like a little square thing. A flannel. That you would wash your face with? Yeah, I know you wear your flannels out here. Yeah. (laughs) Well, that's all for James and Shannon's English and American lessons. Um, I hope to have you on the podcast very soon. I am going to bring my... um, I don't have gear. I'm going to figure out a way to uh, record and audio and video while we're in South Africa. So you'll be back on. Yeah. Woo. Woohoo. Thank you for being a great sport. Thank you for saying a lot of nice things about me. And thank you for being hot. Thanks, baby. Okay. Thanks for having me on here. Did you enjoy it? It's been great. I'm so hungry. Were you nervous? No. We're about to go on the lake with Taylor and Mike. Was I nervous? No. Was I nervous? No. Okay. Bye. <laughs>